Hello there and welcome to a tutorial on the production possibility frontier. Imagine that an economy can only produce two things. Now this may be for a person on a desert island or for a complicated society involving millions. But as science progresses, we simplify first, then we can add in the other variables later. But by considering only two things that a person or an economy can produce really helps us to get to grips with some of the fundamental logical steps economists use. So let's use this desert island. We're going to put a young woman here, Sophie, on the island, and she has two things to do. She can either go fishing or she can collect fruit. Now immediately she faces what we call an opportunity cost. If she goes fishing, she can't go and collect fruit at the same time, but she can decide to spend some time fishing and some time collecting fruit during the day. What we call the production possibility frontier, which we're just about to draw, shows how she can divide her time between the two and what produce she can thus collect. But we're going to assume for the moment that she's incredibly efficient in the use of her time. No faffing around with our Sophie. So, if she spends all day fishing, she can get 10 fish. If she spends all her productive day collecting fruit, she can get 40 pieces of fruit. These are the maxima that we put on the y and the x axes accordingly. Now she can split her time between the two and collect say eight fish and eight fruit at point A or five fish and 20 fruit at point B. In this story, we're using a linear graph. It's a straight line graph from your basic maths. The exchange of production or what we call the marginal rate of transformation from fish to fruit is the same ratio wherever she starts from. So if she chooses to avoid catching another fish, she can spend her time collecting four pieces of fruit. The ratio is thus one to four, and the slope of the graph, negative quarter. Sophie now has an idea. She wants to make life easier for herself, and having some knowledge about catching food from a video she saw before she was stranded, she makes herself a net from some cordage or twine that she makes. She finds that her net doubles her production of fish, before, her maximum catch of fish was 10 and now it's 20, but her fruit picking abilities have not yet changed. So this means with the new frontier for every fish she now chooses not to catch, she can go and collect two pieces of fruit. So the gradient has shifted and the ratio is now 1 to 2. So reading the diagram, the slope has changed. If she wants extra fruit, she gives up half a fish. Or if she wants a fish, she gives up two fruit. I've put her choices of production as A or B, and the move from one to the other is of the same ratio, such as one day she goes out, picks eight pieces of fruit, and she catches 16 fish. The next day she goes out and picks 20 pieces of fruit and catches 10 fish. With both choices, Sophie is maximizing her production, so that we can say she's on the production possibility frontier. So, a little bit more detail, we can note that the marginal rate of transformation has changed, and that this shift in the production possibility frontier tells us that she has become more productive by introducing some physical capital at all to her productivity. The net has captured more fish for her to eat or to dry out for later. So encouraged by her success, she then turns her attention to her fruit picking productivity. She builds herself a basic ladder using branches and the natural cordage that she finds around the woods. So we now have a new production possibility frontier and we're going to draw it from say 20 fish over to 60 pieces of fruit, the maxima that she can produce. The ladder has increased her maximum potential of fruit gathering by 50%. The ratio also changes to one to three. One less fish means three more fruit. In the diagram, I've put a choice combination going from A to B or from B to A, however you look at it. At A, she's catching 13 fish and picking 20 fruit. And if she wants some more fruit, she's going to have to give up some fish. So in this case, for every one fish she gives up, she gains three fish. This new relationship means that she can collect three extra pieces of fruit for every one fish, of course. But it also means that she's more productive in both areas overall by adding the net and the ladder. She's basically grown her economy from when she's walking around trying to catch fish by hand, difficult to do, and trying to pick fruit by hand, a bit easier. 
Now, the previous logic is, of course, simplistic. We are assuming, and this is important to know, that in changing from fishing to fruit collecting, her productivity remains the same. That is, there is a linear relationship between the two activities. But in reality, that's not likely to be the case. So be prepared. Serious economic jargon coming. As she alters production, the marginal rate of transformation between the two activities is likely to change. Now, going back to the late 19th century, there was a revolution in economics called the Marginal Revolution, in which economists became fascinated logically, just economically and mathematically, by the concept of altering something by one, what's the effect on the other um, variable? Whether in this case, you get rid of one fish, how many pieces of fruit can you get? You get rid of one food, how many fish can you get? So this was the Marginal Revolution, turn up about 1880s, 1890s, important in the history of economic thought. Now, in the example we've been using, Sophie's marginal rate remains the same. It's a straight line graph. Now, that's possible, but let's change it. So here we also meet what's called the law of diminishing returns. This time, as Sophie moves from fishing to fruit collecting, she collects fewer and fewer fish. Her initial return as she goes fruit picking is high, but then it's going to dwindle. So this can be shown with a curved graph. So in this sum, as Sophie decides not to go for the 20 maximum fish, she goes for 19. She's able to replace the first fish not caught with 10 pieces of fruit. But when she drops to 18 fish, she finds that she only adds eight pieces of fruit to her collection. Her marginal rate of transformation between fishing and fruit collecting changes from one to 10 to one to eight. The slope is changing. As she chooses to catch less fish, the number of fruit she's able to swap, therefore, that should read, lessens, diminishes. And we can think about why in a moment. But this is an example of the law of diminishing returns. She's getting less return as she moves from one activity to another. Now, mathematically or visually, if you don't like math so much, we can follow the tangent to the curve. It's describing the same thing. So as Sophie moves to collecting more fruit, for every one less fish, she's catching marginally less fruit at each move. It starts off well. She initially gets loads of fruit, but there comes a point where she's down to a ratio of one to one at point C. One less fish, one extra piece of fruit. Then she drops to point D, so one less fish she's going to catch means she only gets point eight of a fruit, whatever that looks like. She may not be happy producing only fish or only fruit, of course, so she may end up at some combination such as B. And this depends on how much she likes fish compared to fruit in the background. We don't describe this on the production possibility frontier, but we can do later on in microeconomics, usually at the undergraduate level. Our focus is purely on the production side, and we're assuming that her preferences are given to us, and at point B, she's a happy person, right? Now the magic. Any move from B is showing her particular opportunity cost of moving from fishing to fruit or fruit for more fishing. At B, the opportunity cost is measured by one extra fish caught is losing eight pieces of fruit, or if she wants to get eight pieces of fruit, she loses a fish. This is the tangent of the slope to the production possibility frontier. Should ring a bell for those doing A-level maths with regards to what you will be doing in calculus. Okay. Now, moving on to other things that we need to know about. Right, let's have a look at point A, which I've just popped on to the above the PPF. Point A is impossible to attain at current levels of technology and capital for Sophie or anyone to get to. Hence the word frontier. You can't get beyond the frontier. Whereas point B, in this case, is Sophie's maximising her productivity between fishing and gathering fruit. Now, C is quite interesting. It's possible, but it's not efficient. Sophie could be producing a lot more of either one or of both goods. Other things to know. Starting here, we can add in a new production possibility frontier to the right of our original one. And a move from B to A represents economic growth for Sophie or any economy. She is able to produce more of both should she wish. This can also stand as a description for economic growth for a locality, such as a village, a town, or a nation, or even the world. What about a move from B to C? Well, this is going to represent a decline in economic wealth. 
the production possibility frontier shifted to the left. And we can ask the question, what could cause this? Well, for Sophie, it may be that her ladder breaks, or her nets fail, or the fish just move away. For an economy, it may be a war, or a natural disaster, or government policies that reduce wealth inadvertently or otherwise. So now we're getting seriously economic here. Take time to learn the production possibility frontier. It helps us understand some really fundamental concepts. There's a lot in it, such as opportunity cost, marginal rate of transformation between production, law of diminishing returns, economic growth, economic decline, and others. And I could go deeper on especially the marginal rate of transformation, but this is the beginning. We will return to it later, I'm sure. Thank you for listening and enjoy learning economics. See you in the next video.